Does that mean you're happy you left? It was the hardest decision I have ever had to make. But I'm glad that I finally had the guts to do it. I understood the lies that you told me to protect your identity. But I could never forgive you for taking that away from me. You can't mean that. Lana, well, it turned your life upside down. Maybe it was exactly what it needed. I could have landed a lot of places in my life, Clark, but without you, none of them would have led me here. So that's it. It's all over. Is that easy? No. But where I am now, for the first time, it feels right. Clark, I know neither of us could say it. But maybe Clark Kent and Lana Lang just weren't meant to end up together. Clark's behavior during Lex's final season can be summarized as Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. Because he can't stop whining at everyone. At Lana for spying on Lex, Lex for being Lex, Kara flying off, and even at Chloe for just telling him not to give up. Clark, this is not the time to be stubborn, okay? Don't do this. He moans so much that by the end, he literally didn't have the will to live anymore. It needed a It's a Wonderful Lifestyle intervention. But then I realized... That was kind of the point. Clark has been avoiding his destiny for so long that everyone literally moved on. His desire to just live a simple farm life has made him feel like he's never made a difference because of how just ineffective he feels now. Ever since I arrived, all I brought is death and suffering. Meteor freaks, phantoms. Brainiac, this planet will be better off if I never existed. As a result, in season 8, Clark finally decides to change after getting his powers back. I've seen people walk away from me. But I've never really said goodbye. I've been holding on to a life on this farm that hasn't existed for years. So what are you going to do? Let it go. It's the only chance I have of finding a new one. Because the whole goofy Veritas plot where everyone is looking to control the Traveler turned out to be, oh, you can control him in the sense that he loses all of his powers, so he's just a normal guy vulnerable to getting beaten up like the rest of us. But Lex and Lana are gone now. It's a new beginning. Clark in the big city, and the show effectively soft reboots, with new showrunners, new relationships, a different tone, and... I kind of love it. On one hand, it's entirely nostalgia speaking, admittedly. This is where I properly got invested into the show in primary school. But on the other hand, within the big picture storytelling, it feels so necessary. Lex and Lana always brought a level of bleakness with them because you knew their futures were doomed. Thus, as the show went on for over five years, they just kept pushing them further and further into nihilistic and twisted storylines, including f***ing fake pregnancies. I'm not saying it shouldn't be dark, I'm saying in my opinion, season eight tonally benefits from just not having them around, even though I deeply miss them. Because watching this right after season seven, you could breathe again. There's a sorely missed sense of optimism to Clark's relationships with Lois, Ollie, and Tess. It's a really, really nice palate cleanser, like drinking a nice glass of clear water after drinking the blackest coffee ever. <laughs> I credit a lot of this joy to one factor. Erica Durance's Lois Lane. I'm actually getting butterflies. Her slow growth and prominence is really similar to Mary Jane. I mean, real Mary Jane, guys, come on. You know, the comic relief who has perfect chemistry with the main character and live their own independent lives in parallel until the main girl tragically leaves, so their role expands. Both characters are effectively secret weapons within the big picture long-term storytelling, a quiet narrative investment. So when they become a love interest, they don't feel like an accessory or just the new girl, but you have someone fully realized with history, conflict, and a complete personality. However, where MJ had to grow to become more mature and look after Peter Parker, Lois was already more mature than Clark. Lois, 
You're the one who gave me the application. She's a year older, has a job, is experienced in her field, and while Clark was crying about Lana for years, Lois had already survived a breakup with Ollie and Julian, and was still regularly dating. She knew who she was and lived responsibly. When the occasional feelings flare up, you just gotta trust your gut, as hard as it is, and realize that you broke up for a reason. Exactly. <sighs> that one's on the house, Smallville. She's at the mature destination Clark is finally arriving at. The only thing she didn't know was what she wanted, because under the jokes and the courage, she's actually really afraid of being left behind. Lois, this isn't like you. Normally when things get challenging, that's when you get interested. This is different. My dad was a general. And he cared about me. But I learned really early that his role in the world was a lot more important than being a father. And you know what, for good reasons. And Ollie's life is demanding too. Lois, well, just because someone's life has great responsibility doesn't mean your life has to take second place. Of course it does, Clark. Can you imagine what it would be like to look into somebody's eyes and know that their destiny is so much greater than yours that you will never compete? You will always be left behind. That would be hard for anyone, but- No, I can't be left behind one more time. Lois left Ollie when she found out he was Green Arrow because she didn't have the strength to deal with the risk. But we know she has a future with Clark, where the struggle will reappear again. However, the difference is that Clark is worth it. Lois is destined to find the strength, and also since they've shared a life before they even got together. He was a funny rival, her journalistic partner, as the Blur, as Superman, and then eventually her husband. He'll always be there for her. I've seen the way you two look at each other. <laughs> you need to get your eyesight checked, Olsen. Clark doesn't like me, he likes driving me crazy. Lois has finally found someone who's both worth the risk and is certain will never leave her behind. She just needs to be ready to admit it. But then there's one more thing though. I actually lied. Lana does actually come back, which I technically spoiled with the opening because I couldn't help myself. I can feel the air Pulling me up as I leave you there Lana Lang is Smallville's greatest creation in the sense that every character keeps telling me she's perfect and everyone is obsessed with her. You have just as much presence as Lex said you did. Her life is kind of whack though. First she founded the Talon, which became the central perk of the show. But then it's just not a concern anymore. She finds out her mom had an affair with some other guy who she befriends, but then he just leaves with his new family and is never brought up ever again. She falls in love with Jensen Ackles. He dies from being hit in the face by a media. She also never mentions him ever again. She marries Lex because Clark won't tell her the truth. Then she fakes her death, finds Isis, which is then run by Chloe, before leaving after being possessed by Brainiac. The writers have literally admitted to not knowing what to do with her character after high school, so all these activities in typical Smallville fashion from a pre-streaming world didn't really culminate into anything. But what it does do is cast an implicit shadow where, if you've watched it since the beginning, you can kind of empathise with just how worn out she is. Where after being left behind by so many things, she just leaves. As a result, Lana's return does two things. First, it's a contractual obligation, because Kristen Crook left early to make the Legend of Chun-Li movie. No comment. Secondly, it's to give Lana a more dignifying exit that isn't just, I've got a broken heart, dude. And what is true victory? Victory over oneself. She's instead now completes a path of self-discovery, where she becomes her own force for good. I am not training you to be like someone else. I'm training you to be Lana Lang. Rise from the ashes of your previous life, stronger, more powerful. A change so solidified that she instills it into Tess, the new acting CEO of Luther Corp, someone who resembles herself back in season six during the marriage arc. I used to see that look in the mirror. You'll do anything to defend Lex, to protect him. Since when did you and Lana become close friends? I will forever be grateful to her. Lana's responsible for finally showing me the monster that Lex really is. He has a way of turning that kind of devotion against you. 
Tess Mercer is also wonderfully retconned into the story by revealing that the video Lana left was actually orchestrated by her at gunpoint. On one hand, it's really dumb, because despite being really messy, Season 7 had a fairly cohesive theme when it came to the main three characters outliving their desires. Now it's like an incomplete pizza. But on the other hand, it doesn't really change the destination, and Lana now gets to be motivated by revenge. And that pushes her further than just a broken heart. She can go toe to toe with Green Arrow now because she went through a full Green Beret training including the burn yourself with hot iron cliche. She then mucks up Lex's regenerative body experiment by using it and getting superpowers herself. Thus, Lex is screwed. As Clark's equal, he's now finally willing to give what Bizarro gave her. And she gives him what he needs. All I've ever wanted was someone to share my life with. To work with me, side by side, just like my mom and dad did. With my abilities, I never thought Clark, that stop. I'm right here. But then, whoops, Lex returns as a body double with a terrible voice manipulator. Do you know what people remember about the greatest star-crossed romances? And he's like, hey you! Touch these big plastic balls to absorb some kryptonite so you can't be together. Clark is so mad about these balls that he's about to kill Lex, but Lana steps in. But in a big twist, Lex doesn't get taken away and sent to prison, but killed by Oliver. Lana leaves. Much like at the start of the show, where she had a kryptonite necklace, Clark can only live by staying away. As a story, Lana's return is a tragedy about two people who love each other more than anything in the world, finally getting what they want, but losing it all. Call it destiny, call it Lex's revenge, but in the end, it's punishment for people who deserve more. However, as a character arc, Lana's journey is complete. Now that she can make the hard choices, Clark couldn't. So instead of being left behind again, she leaves. If I squint just right, it's like we're 14 again. You say that like it's a good thing. Lana thought she was holding me back, and you know what? She was right. Look what happened after she left. I got off the farm, I got a job, I started using my abilities to help people when they needed it the most. What's up? I couldn't sleep. So you came to a coffee shop? Did you do that because Lana left, or because you simply grew up and realized what you wanted to do with your life? Not your best plan, Mr. Kent. Lana, I know you had reasons for coming back. Why are you staying? Clark, maybe she isn't the liability you're making her out to be. Leaving's harder than I thought it would be. But like I said, I don't know how long I'll be here, so... Whether you leave in 10 years or you leave tomorrow, the important thing is you're here today. Lex convinced us it was for her own good. I'm nice of him to kidnap her. Lex also said that she was in that asylum because of you. That your relationship was so dysfunctional, you were constantly hurting her. Even if we can't be together, I want you in my life. That's where you're stronger than me. We aren't 14 anymore. The world will always be bigger than the both of us. Maybe it doesn't have to be all or nothing. To see you. On the street every day. I'll not be able to touch you. For the last year. All I've done is sacrifice myself and everything that I love for the greater good. I love you. What if the rest of the world didn't have to come first? The world needs you, Clark. What about what we need? Anybody in this state of Season 8 is about taking a peek inside yourself and finding something you didn't know you had. The strength to be more. To leave the past behind and walk into a horizon filled with new things. A new, better fitted life. I understand the need for closure, Clark. Just promise you're not going to slam my cousin in the door. However, what if you're someone who looks inside and doesn't find a light, but only see more darkness? You see, this season is secretly structured like a seesaw, where after the high optimism, we can now fall even deeper into darkness. Where characters compromise and learn the wrong lessons. Where everyone is on a doomed path. Get it? Get it? It's, just, it's the worst way I could end this video. We're stranded and beaten, reaching for help.
So this covers the first half of Smallville Season 8. I decided to split the season into two videos because I wanted to devote an entire one to Lana because I've kind of been overlooking her character this whole time. I then also included a lot more about Lois into it so then I've now laid out the framework for her character study in Season 9. But anyways, I really, really enjoyed making these Smallville videos. What can I say? I've now entered the era of the show where I really got into it as a kid so I'm just burning through the show now in my rewatch. Also, special thanks to everyone on Patreon. You guys are now what's keeping me going, so thanks. Sure you want us to just leave him here? For now.